Hello, Legacy Builders. It's always great to connect with you. My name is Rita Stewart, and today I want to talk to you about something that has come up in one of my tribes. And specifically, it relates to wealth-minded versus, um, how do I say, average-minded. A wealth-minded um, concept versus an average-minded concept or the concept thereof. And when I thought about this as it related to my particular um, audience, uh, you all specifically, I thought about three uh, analogies that came to mind for me when I thought about it, thought about the concepts of being wealth minded versus average minded. And the first one, I'll use the example of a website or a blog. If you are a distributor with a direct sales company or you may be an MLM or network marketing, whatever the case may be, you have likely been given a website. And it is a replicated website that every single distributor or individual who is affiliated with that particular company has received. So therefore, of course, all of the websites look alike. And yes, I'm familiar because I have a couple of um, those types of websites. So that's pretty much average because it's nothing unique or different because everyone has it who's affiliated with the company, as I've stated. But when I think about a blog, a blog that has been personally branded for you and based on your business aspirations, based on your vision, based on your goals, that helps you to stand out amongst the crowd. A blog where you have an opportunity to have capture pages that are unique with a specific offer to the individuals who visit your blog, who are then able to be connected to your mailing list, because then with your capture pages, of course, you have them connected to an autoresponder. And as a result, you are able to do follow up as well as get to know the particular individuals who have expressed and an interest um, in what you have to offer by way of your blog. And they can also get to come to know, like, and of course, trust you. So wealth-minded, right? You're looking at the bigger picture and you're looking to build a business, right? A business that's branded and owned by you yourself. The second analogy that came to mind for me was income. Linear income versus leverage income. And to keep it simple, of course, linear income would be income where you earn it based on the number of hours you work. So you go to work for an hour and you earn a certain dollar amount per hour. You go to work for a week, you earn a certain dollar amount per week, period. So you're trading time for dollars, right? Nothing wrong with that. Many people do it every day. However, when I think about leverage income and to use uh, another simple example of that, when I wrote my book, I did the work for that book one time. However, I will be receiving royalties for that book for a lifetime and not only for a lifetime, for generations to come, because then my daughter will have access to the royalties for that book, for the book sales, right? And I think about it also, let's say, for instance, you created a product yourself. And with that product, you give individuals the opportunities to be an affiliate for that product. So not only will you be selling that particular products, but you're leveraging the work of other individuals who you have also given, whom you've also given affiliate rights to sell that product. So you're leveraging their time and their sales skills to earn funds from that as well. And I'm keeping these examples very simple, but again, I see average minded here versus wealth minded because you've learned to leverage other systems, other processes, or leverage the work you've done once to obtain income over and over and over again. And the third analogy that comes to mind for me is high ticket items that you may offer as one of your product streams versus retail or um, how do I say transactional type things that may be part of your portfolio. And I do have both. But one of the things that I want to share is the fact that if you have not ventured into high ticket items, it's something that you seriously need to consider as part of your business portfolio. And this is why I say it. Whether you sell an item that costs $10 or $100, 
versus an item that will net you a thousand, two thousand, three, ten thousand dollars. You still have to do the marketing steps. You still have to do whatever it takes to get that product in front of an audience. So why not, right? Use the marketing skills that you learn and that you are applying day in and day out and leverage those skills to bring in or to garner you more income, right? And more profits for your business by engaging in the promotion of a high ticket item. And I am gonna put, in fact, in the notes or in the comments section, some insight on a high ticket product that you may very well be interested in. I would love it if you would also share with me your thoughts on average minded versus wealth minded. I mean, when I think about the concept of legacy and you all know by now how much that means to me, when you engage in activities that can have a lifelong and generational impact to humanity, that makes a big difference. That's when you're thinking wealth-minded because it's not necessarily just from a monetary perspective. You're talking about wealth as it relates to your health, as it relates to your well-being, as it relates to your effect on generations in the future. So anyway, those are just some thoughts that came to mind as I thought about you all in my audience. And be sure to leave a comment, um, ask me any questions, reach out to me, share with me your thoughts on uh, legacy and the concepts or the notions of being wealth-minded versus um, just being average-minded. I hope that's not where you are. I'm trusting that you're not because you're legacy builders. So thanks again. My name is Rita Stewart. For those of you whom I have not met, and you can connect with me on my blog, ilegacybuilder.com. It's always a joy to share with you, and I'll look forward to next time. Bye-bye.